Hello, and welcome to the Volunteer Virtues Network. My name is Michael, and I'll be a show, I'll be a host on Something is Rotten in the State of Denmark. Today, I'll be having Winter Trabex. Is that pronounced yes. correctly? You got it. It's awesome. good enough. I'll be having Winter Trabex with me to talk a bit about what comes to our mind, actually. She, <laughs> Winter had to come in on a very short notice because the guest I was going to have on couldn't make it. So welcome to you, Winter, and thanks for doing this. Hello. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> so what do we want to talk about? You mentioned something about economy. Yeah, um, I've been reading a lot of uh, economics lately, so that that's what I that's what I really know about. So maybe maybe you can start with talking about the how economics are in in Denmark, and I'll, I'll talk about how they are in America. Well, we have a, a Keynesian system. I think uh, a lot of money printing and uh, what's it called? Um, I'm not sure what it's called now. That's annoying. Okay. I don't know. Two seconds. I'll look it up. <laughs> uh, yeah. The redistribution. That was what it was called. Oh, you have redi redistribution of wealth, essentially. Yeah. So Denmark is kind of socialist. It's very socialist. Uh, I think, like two-thirds of the population is getting their money in some way by, from the government. Okay. So, very socialist. This is a lot of people. Just uh, in the public sector, I think it's like 800,000 workers just in the public sector alone, not counting police, or fire departments, and stuff like that. And we have like six million people in Denmark, so... <laughs> That doesn't sound very, uh, very good. No, not at all. And it's like 800 people on welfare, oh, 800,000 people on welfare as well. And that's not including pensions. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure about the numbers, but it's, it's something in that amount, at least. I'm sure of that. So how, how do they, how do they keep the economy from crashing then? This, this doesn't sound like a sustainable system. Well, there are some pretty rich Danish people that get taxed a lot. Mm. They like half a bit or something. And then there's the money printing. Oh, so so they, they keep printing money in order, in order to keep the system going. Yeah, it works pretty much like the, the, okay. the US economy. Okay, well, I, I, can, I can talk quite a bit about America since I, since I live here. <laughs> yeah, I think it would be better to do that, and that, all that. Good at it. Okay, so no, the, the research that I've done um, from about 1787, when America's constitution was adopted, until 1913, there was no central bank. There was, I, I don't remember when they instituted the IRS, but I believe through the 19th century, they didn't, they weren't, they had an IRS, but it wasn't responsible for taxation. So what happened in, in 1907, there was this currency crisis that was caused by a group of banks. They were all trying to buy up this company called, uh, I think it was U.S. Copper, something like this. And that, that failed. So, so the banks couldn't, they, they lost money and they couldn't, pay back their customers and so we had to run on the banks and it spread throughout the system and all of a sudden there was this currency crisis and so people were thinking well we, we need a central bank to stop this from happening we, we need somebody to assure us that if there's a crisis then our money would be okay essentially and so in 1913 the Federal Reserve got passed it, it, came, it came into being and, and from then on the, the U.S. dollar has been depreciating over time. Just it's it's all it's always been deflating. It it doesn't gain value; it loses value. And it got it got even worse in the in the seventies. I forget what year, but Richard Nixon, I I believe he was the president who took 
America off the gold standard. And it, it, it just became paper money backed by nothing. And short, shortly after that, there was, there was a kind of a small depression, sort of like. And, and then, of course, you had the 2008 um, stuff that, that America went through, the currency crisis again. And I, I, I see it's just a matter of time before it, before it all, there's another currency crisis because uh, printing money causes inflation, which causes the dollar to lose value, which, you know, just, it, it hurts the entire system. They, they don't seem to understand it. But isn't there a currency crisis still? I don't think the 2008 crisis is over yet. Well, it's it's kind of they put it on pause, is what they did. It's it ha it hasn't been resolved, but it hasn't gotten any worse. It's on pause. Well, more and more that people loses their jobs, and I think that is a pretty good uh, some pretty good evidence for it. it is still going worse than it was back then. But yeah. yeah. Uh, I haven't really been able to find any evidence of inflation causing people to lose jobs, but I, it's it's a, it's only theory that when when businesses have less spending power because their money is worth less, then they can they won't be able to hire as many employees. Yeah. I, I haven't I haven't seen actual hard evidence to that effect, but I would not be surprised if that's the case. Yeah, I, I think you're right in that. But uh, yeah, the, the taxation probably has more to do with it than inflation, at least. Yeah, you know, in in America, it's weird because a lot of people think that everyone should pay their fair share of taxes, even when American businesses are moving out of the country to avoid that. They don't think let let's let's get rid of taxes. They think, well, let's let's bring these businesses back back in and tax them a lot. And the the only thing that's going to do is it's going to cause those businesses to be able to produce less, employ less people, make less stuff. So so the the things they sell are going to be more expensive. And and so it's it's really the customers of that business who are paying that tax. Yeah, it was, Burger King was the recent company to hit the media with that, but people are just going insane over it. Yeah, I, I don't I don't understand why why they can't just put two and two together. It's always ta taxes are not even necessary. We didn't have in America. We didn't have this during the nineteenth century. We we had uh, we had we had tariffs and we we had other other little things that supported the government income, but no taxes. So I I, I don't get why people are saying that we need taxes today when. There's already a model of a hundred years of this company's history, this country's history, when that that wasn't even the case. Yeah, and it's funny because they they always say if you don't like it here, then leave. And, and <laughs> yeah, and then, and then when you do leave, they don't they don't like that you leave. Yeah, it's so, so it's like if you don't if you don't like it, you just have to kind of put up with my criticism of you. Oh, you're just greedy and. You can always leave and oh yeah, because it. my I'm gonna... doesn't belong to me. It belongs to someone else. That someone, another person who doesn't even produce what I produce, somehow owns my property without my permission. Yeah, that, that's that's the whole idea behind people must pay taxes. That what whatever whatever I I produce in the process of engaging in mutuality is not mine, essentially. And and that that is entirely entirely the opposite way to go about creating an incentive for businesses to hire people and to make stuff. Yeah, it's it's pretty dumb uh, for for me, <laughs> at least. I, mean, I yeah. can't believe people just don't see it. It's just a logical. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you're if you're a business owner and and you and you have like let's say you make like hundred thousand dollars a year and ten thousand of that is taken out of tax as well suppose suppose if you got to keep that extra ten thousand dollars as discretionary income you could you could put it towards the expansion of business or hiring another staff member or 
upgrading your website or, or whatever you want to do with it. I mean, that, that income lost is one less thing that business can do to make itself more productive. Yeah, and who knows what other costs it have for the business to lose those when they have, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, it's what you have to really look at it in, in terms of what, what the business is not able to do because of regulation and taxation as opposed to what they are doing. Yeah, exactly. And, and one, once you see that, it, it is incredible how, how restrictive America is. Yeah, and it's funny because uh, socialists over here always look to the U.S. as, a, as an argument against freedom. Because, oh, you want to lower <laughs> taxes? You can always move to the U.S. or even Somalia. But <laughs> seriously, they... Yeah. They always use the U.S. as a scare example, and <laughs> I just find it ridiculous because we don't we don't have actually more free than you. <laughs> we really don't have freedom over here. Not not that much, to be honest with you. We're we're, we're restricted in just about ev everything we do. There's a government regulation for it. Yeah, and at least our cops don't shoot us yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yet. That's an interesting word you say at the end. They, they and, don't secure uh, yet. The war on drugs are going to cause it at one point. I'm not sure when, but it will happen. Because they're getting, just like the U.S. The police, they're getting more and more militarized. So, yeah. Yeah, well, the only, the only purpose of the war on drugs is for police to be able to confiscate private property and, and money. And all, all they need to say is, well, you have a plant that we don't like, so we're, we're going to take all your property and sell it off at an auction. Yeah, and it's the same here, actually. Yeah, this is, this is the way that police departments make money. So the war on drugs is, is not really trying to stop people from doing drugs. It's really trying to help police departments make money. That's all it is. Yeah, and the prison system, of course. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I know a lot about that, too, but... Uh, and let's go into that then. Say what? Let's go into that then. I'm pretty okay. sure that's rather interesting. So, so the prison system in America, um, there, there are state prisons and there are private prisons. Now, essentially, when the Constitution was ratified in 1787, one of, one of the clauses in it said that anyone convicted of a crime it's it's legal to use them as unpaid labor in a prison. Okay, so uh, it it took a while for America to realize what that actually meant, but but today it's come to pass that prisons are essentially pl places where companies like shirt producers or licensed plate plate producers use un unpaid or very low paid labor in order to get their product out. And what, and what this people, means for those companies is that they 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 reduce their costs dramatically, and and their profit goes really really up. So th this is why America has so many prisoners because people people are just being put in, into the prison system uh, for for any any minor violation. You you can you can get a cop upset, and next thing you know, you're doing five years at the state penitentiary. There's nothing you can do about it. Or oh, there, there's very little you can do about it. And and, and then people they complain about Nike Nike going to a, a poor country and and paying some poor people to make their shoes. Yeah, um, <laughs> I don't I don't like that myself, but I I think and they're better off with Nike doing it than without them doing it. So. Well, that that that's true. I mean, with, without that employment, you know, they they have at least something. But I I would rather see Nike pay pay their pay their people a decent wage. But well, Nike actually that, bids the other companies down there. So, hmm. at least from my knowledge, uh, the, um, I can't be sure, but that's what I've seen from the. From other people talking about it, the country sure of it, but there are some pretty. They have some credibility to me, so I, I could believe it. 
Okay. The I I actually have worked in a in a Nike warehouse before, and one one of the things I found is that their their shoes are just too expensive. Like they charge one hundred twenty dollars for a pair of sneakers. But well, that's because so, people want to pay it. Well, so, some people want to pay it, but at, at the same time, Nike has unrealistic expectations that they think everyone wants to pay that price when only some people do. Well, a lot so, of people so do. Re- At least rest- we're here. A lot of people wear Nike over here. Well, in in, in America, um, the, those Nike shoes they they just go unsold at at Foot Locker and other businesses like that. So what happens is, Foot Locker sends it back to the Nike warehouse because it doesn't sell, and the and the Nike warehouse has to send it back to the Nike stores to try and try and try and get it sold. Uh-huh. And, and and really, it's just silly that they they don't see that all they need to do is lower the price, and and they'd have and they have more sales on the whole, instead of a, a a big a big profit on one item, you could have small profits on lots of items. I think it's because soccer isn't popular over there. Soccer? Yeah, because uh, a, a lot of football players, uh, uh, soccer players, I call it football normally. Well, it, it was, it was kind of, there was a big to-do about it uh, when the World Cup was going on, but that that was unusual. We we in America, we usually don't support soccer that much. We're, we're into NFL football. Yeah, I know. But you, we, you throw a brown pig skin at each other, and, and we, <laughs> in our country, we, we watch that for days and days. Yeah, I, I find it, I find it pretty silly, but. That's I find soccer silly as well. So, yeah. <laughs> well, sports are essentially fun to play and boring to watch. That yeah, that's what exactly. I think. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's I think it, that's the the difference between the why the U.S. population doesn't buy a Nike and why the Danish population buys Nike because a lot of the soccer football players. Over here, they wear Nike and they yeah. advertise for it, and do buy what they see them wear. Oh, so yeah, that you might have a point because in America, Nike markets to basketball fans, yeah. and, and, and basketball is like, well, who cares, right? <laughs> it's fun to watch sometimes, but no, not really. Yeah, if if we, I think if they did it to, more towards football players, they'd football fans, then they, they'd have a lot more sales, but they, they don't do oh. that. So, yeah, The market is probably already taken by other companies, isn't it? Hmm. <sighs> I'm not sure. But yeah. I'm not sure either. But I just remembered you had four articles on the top ten on Liberty Me this month. That's pretty good. Yeah. Congratulations yeah. on that. Well, thank you. Um, I'm happy that I won about uh, $180, $190 in Bitcoin. That, that was unexpected. Uh, that's pretty cool. So now now I'm actually going go to go to a bar and ask them if I can buy a strawberry daiquiri th- with Bitcoin now. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to prepare in my head this whole speech about, well, what is Bitcoin, what does it do, and why is it valuable? <laughs> so it's it uh, your first Bitcoin then? Yeah, I, I started it up in uh, in April, and I when the, when the thing goes through, I'll have about two hundred eighty dollars, something like that, from it. Oh, pretty cool, pretty cool. That's a good. It's a good it's, way for for people to get into Bitcoin the way yeah. Jimmy does it. That's uh, I, I like it because it's it's a deflationary currency. So yeah, I I absolutely love the concept. It's just amazing. But you what you can't do with the the blockchain, it's just fantastic. Yeah, I, I just I just really want like grocery stores to accept Bitcoin over here and, <laughs> and like bars to accept Bitcoin and, and clothing stores to accept it. If that if that happens I, I think we'll be we'll we'll be absolutely fine. Yeah, we, we, we can I've, just get rid of the dollar and go to cryptos. Yeah, I've been trying to get my the bakery just uh, on the uh, other side of the street to accept Bitcoin, but they 
they really don't care. No. <laughs> yeah, so good good luck staying in business when the currency crashes. Yeah, I haven't been all that persuasive yet, but but I tried to talk with them about it, and they were just not they, interested. They didn't want to listen to you. No, not really. <laughs> I, I guess I guess if you have a model that works and and it's been working for you for a while, you you don't necessarily see the need to change it. Yeah, we have a uh, one tiny supermarket here and a baker. You d you just have one supermarket, one baker. That's it. Uh, it's a small town, but the baker gets a pretty decent traffic in there. Huh. Okay. And they have the prices to show it. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. But yeah, to tell me a little bit about your articles. Okay, so when I when I write articles, I usually do it because I, I get struck with an idea, either by reading something on Facebook or or maybe I'm driving and I'm thinking about an idea and I come home and write it. And I have when I start writing, I have no idea how long it's going to be. Some some of them are like four hundred words. Some of them are like two thousand words. And basically, my, my entire focus is to make people see the hidden effects of government regulation and taxes and all, all, all these little tiny small decisions that could have been made but aren't made because government is, is, restricting, is restricting everybody. Like, when, when government takes, let's say, $100,000 to build a bridge, you you don't you don't see each individual citizen who had to pay two other dollars as as their part to help help that bridge get built. You you don't you don't see a person who could have put that two other dollars to buy a used television, or or a used computer, or or fix up their car, or or any of these things. So that that bridge is built and we all see it, but we we don't see those those extra things that consumers could have built. Yeah, could have had, but they don't have, because the government took their money. That that's that's essentially what I try to say, in different ways in all my articles. Yeah, it's a pretty good thing to point out that there are other costs to one thing. When uh, the when forces are involved, and people can't use their own money, so. Yeah, I mean, in taxation, you don't you don't have a choice as as to what is used for it. You don't have a choice about who spends it or what's it spent on or, or or whether the money is being spent efficiently or whether you even want the thing that's that's being spent. You you don't there's no choice. You you give your money and, and that's that's all you can do. Yeah. It's so that that's why I like Bitcoin because there's no taxes. Yeah. And uh, what what will what will end up happening in a Bitcoin economy is that all those little things that people could have bought, well, well they, they will have it, and maybe we won't have a bridge, but all, all those extra people, they'll they'll have, they'll have all the discretionary income to buy to buy the extra things they need. And maybe people even want the bridge, and they'll pay for it. On the yeah, it, 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 it depends on the area. I mean, some, sometimes bridges are nice, but sometimes you know, maybe it's not necessary. Maybe. We we can just build like uh, if the w if the river is wide enough, we can just build a ferry and take it back and forth. Or you know, th there's all kinds of solutions that the bridge is just one of them. Yeah, and who knows? Maybe we don't need a bridge. Maybe we need flying cars. Hmm. I I, I would be absolutely thrilled with flying cars. Yeah, I would love it. I want my spaceship soon. Be <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, good luck with that because all all of the science development in in space technology in America is governmental, and th and that's why it's it's all it's all regressed over time. It's gone backwards because the government just it, it keeps putting itself in debt by paying for things that don't give it a return, and and so it. It keeps it keeps spending money and it doesn't get a return on the money. So all, all it can do is just keep spending, and, yeah. and eventually it runs out of spending power. I'm counting on Richard Branson to do something about it. <laughs> yeah.
that would be I, awesome I, to see Virgin Galactic or SpaceX to do the job. I I think if we if we maybe within the next hundred years you can you can buy a spaceship with Bitcoin. Oh, that would be. Uh, you can already go to space for Bitcoin. Yeah, I I. I think that can actually happen. That's a possibility. Richard Branson has already been out saying that you can buy a ticket for Bitcoin. Yeah. So that's that's pretty amazing. You, Bitcoin can actually take you to space right now. <laughs> yeah. If you have enough of it, sure. Yeah. I actually, I actually might want to do that someday. Now that I think of it. Yeah, I should have been out earlier to get some Bitcoin. I would definitely have bought a ticket. Uh, actually, it's it's still early. Uh, <laughs> I know that, but but still, I, actually, I wanted to be out like at the nine dollar mark or something. That would have been awesome. Well, the, yeah, I, I hear that a lot. Actually, I hear people saying they they wish they'd gotten into Bitcoin and when it, when it was like five dollars when it was first starting, but. Here, the thing is, it hasn't been adopted totally, like everywhere. Yeah, I it's, was. Uh, it's it's still just starting out, and all of the bitcoins haven't been put in the system. So what what this means is, it's it's not finished yet. You're 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 still in the in the process in the early days of, of the technology. Yeah. And it, it's awesome. If it's if you want to invest now, now's a great time to invest. Yeah, it's it's just imagine if it takes just maybe five percent of the economy and all, it'll be worth millions. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. But I I first heard about it in two thousand and nine, and I laughed at all of us, everyone else. <laughs> you laughed at it? Yeah, I did. I I couldn't believe that currency could be on the internet. Uh, no way. And. And now I take it you've changed your mind. Yeah, then I heard about it in last year. Uh, actually, a year ago now, I think. I saw a Molino video, The Truth About Bitcoin or something like that. And then I bought some. A lot of them, actually. But yeah. It would have been cool being out earlier, but I take it on myself. <laughs> that I didn't just yeah. go with it. Um, what in the first days when all you needed was a computer to mine Bitcoin? Yeah. In instead of investing thousands of dollars in these in these mining little gears that you don't even know if you're going to make make enough on it. Yeah, I've I've made money on my mining, but I if I had just bought Bitcoin instead, I would have made more money. Oh yeah, you you think you think buying Bitcoin itself is cheaper than? than uh, going to it mine? was at that point. I bought. Uh, I didn't buy enough uh, mining power. I bought it from. Uh, I bought a mining contract on the internet. Oh yeah. Yeah. How how did how did that work out? Uh, it would work. It it had worked out pretty well actually. I've earned a couple of Bitcoin from it, but I could have bought at least four times as many if I had. Bought them instead. I see. So, so I, is, is there any profit in mining, or no, or is it better to just buy it outright? You need to have a lot of mining power to gain any profit. Now, I think. Okay. So it, it's essentially it's like you, you the more money you have to spend, then does doesn't that mean that fewer miners will be will be getting into it then? Yeah, I think so. I wouldn't recommend getting into it now, at least. That would mm. be, that, I think that would be a waste of money. But there's still the old miners that are expanding their mining rigs, so... Huh. Oh, I think we have to end it now. You, you, ha you have to end it now? Yeah, mm. we're hitting the 30-minute mark. You gotta get going? Okay. No, that is just... The show is ending now. I have 30 minutes, so... Oh, I see. Okay, well... Do, do you want to... Uh, what's it called? Uh, advertise a bit for your book? 
Oh, sure. Well, I, I wrote a book. Um, it's called How, How to Write Fiction, uh, Wrangling with the Written Word. It's, uh, it's available on Amazon as an ebook. Yeah, I'll, and, and, I'll just throw a link in with it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll send you a link and you can do all that then. Awesome. But say something about your book. Oh, well, it's, uh, I've been writing fiction for 15 years, so I, I thought I might write a book about helping people to do that and it's it's really short you can read it in a day and my hope is that the what you learn from it will last you a lifetime that's awesome I actually have a friend who are trying to become a writer and he has trouble starting to write so I'll definitely recommend it to him okay it's it's the book is easy reading it's it's very short you won't have to Invest a lot of time in it. Just, j just the main thing is read it and then practice and then see where you go. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for coming on, Winter. It was.